Welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore the domain and period of sine and cosine. Our objectives are to determine the domain and range of the sine and cosine, determine the period of them, take a look at sine and cosine as even and odd trig functions, and then we'll have a sample or two using the calculator to evaluate trig functions in radian mode. The first objective, take a look at the domain of sine and cosine. Well, domain, remember, is our valid inputs. What can we input for x, or in this case, what can we input for our angle? Um, and that is that it's going to be the set of all real numbers. We can input any angle, any measure of angle that we want, positive angles, negative angles. Uh, we've got those multiple rotations that we do. So there aren't any invalid inputs for the domain of sine and cosine. Those are never going to be undefined, um, so we can put in positive numbers and negative numbers. The range, on the other hand, is a little bit of a different story. Consider the unit circle. Now our range is our outputs. So when we input a value, what is our output going to be? Well, if you think about sine and cosine, um, just on the unit circle, pi over 6, we had the square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half for our cosine and sine. And then those were reflected onto the 60 degree and or our pi over 3. And our pi over 4 or 45 degree, that was the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And then as we walked around the unit circle, we only got as high as like one or zero for sine or cosine. We also had negative values for sine and cosine, but they always were between zero and one. So no matter how many revolutions we did or what direction we went, the lowest output we would get would be negative one, and the highest output we could get would be one for sine and cosine, just looking at our uh, ordered pairs. It would make sense then that our range for sine and cosine is going to be between negative 1 and 1. Y has got to be greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. So our range for sine and cosine are going to be the same, and they have to be between 1 and negative 1. Now, this is not true for tangent and cotangent. Uh, we'll look at those at a different time. Uh, but we get different results for that for both our domain and our range. The period of sine and cosine, let's consider we're working with sine of t and cosine of t. So we're talking some angle here, and we're using t just as our value. If we add 2 pi to each value in the interval 0 to 2 pi, essentially if we make revolutions around the unit circle, well, what happens is we keep getting the same answers, similar to what we talked about above in Objective 1 for our domain and range. So what we're really talking about here is our coterminal angles. So if we have an angle of, say, 300 degrees, we're going to get the same trig functions as if we did, say, negative 60 degrees. Or if we did a whole nother revolution around and did 660 degrees, we're still going to get the same trig values for sine and cosine. Since on every revolution around the unit circle, our values repeat, our outputs repeat, that means that our sine and cosine are periodic. They repeat every 2 pi. So the value of sine of t plus 2 pi and cosine of t plus 2 pi correspond to just the, our base sine of t and cosine of t. So that leads to the general result. The sine of t plus 2 pi n, and that's just the number of revolutions, equals the sine of t. And the cosine of t plus 2 pi times n equals the cosine of t. So we're just saying every time we do another revolution, whether it be positive direction or negative direction, we're going to come back to our base angle. And that's 
the definition of periodic. And we will look at the four other trig functions that are also periodic, and we'll discuss those later in chapter four. Objective three, we're going to take a look at even and odd trig functions here, and we're just going to give it to you. Just recall that a function is even when f of the opposite of t equals f of t. An even function we may remember had all those even exponents, right? Those even exponents took our negative input and made them positive. So an even when f of negative t equals f of t, or when f of the opposite of t equals the opposite of f of t. So cosine and secant, cosine and its reciprocal, those are even functions. They're going to be symmetric to the y-axis. And then sine and its reciprocal cosecant and tangent and its reciprocal cotangent, those are odd functions. Graphically, they're going to be symmetrical about the origin, um, but those, those functions are odd. We can use the period to evaluate sine and cosine since we know that they're both periodic and the period is 2 pi. We can like subtract out or add the number of 2 pi's, the number of revolutions, and get right back to our base. So we're saying, you know, 13 pi over 6 is really the same as 12 pi over 6 plus 1 pi over 6. So we can cancel out that one revolution and just evaluate it as pi over 6, and the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So that's going to be the same thing as the sine of 13 pi over 6. And we can do the same thing with a negative angle. Negative 7 pi over 2 is super close to a negative 8 pi over 2. So that would be four, excuse me, that would be two revolutions. So if I subtract out negative 4 pi, I'm left with positive pi over 2. Positive pi over 2 is up here on the y-axis at 0, 1. So the cosine of negative 7 pi over 2 equals the cosine of negative 4 pi plus pi over 2. So we really only have to evaluate at pi over 2. So the cosine of pi over 2 is our x coordinate, which is 0. And then for sine of some angle t, if it equals 4 fifths, this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, the sine of the opposite of t is going to equal negative 4 fifths we've got an odd function here, right? The sine of negative t equals the opposite of the sine of t. So if sine of t is 4 fifths, the opposite of sine of t is negative 4. And finally, we're going to use our calculator to evaluate a sine and a cosecant function. The sine function is pretty straightforward. That button's going to be right on the calculator. The cosecant, though, that one is not on our calculator. So we're going to have to do uh, some work with this. These are in radians, so we need to make sure our calculator is in radian mode. So pulling up our calculator, I can see here that my calculator is in degree mode, so I have to go change the mode. Then I cursor down to radians, select that, and then quit that, and now I can see I'm in radian mode, so now I'm going to get the correct values. If I don't have this on the unit circle, that's okay. I uh, can just input this into my calculator. Sine of 3 pi, 3 pi divided by 8. And I get that particular value, 0.9239 to four decimal places. So pay attention to what you're asked for and how many decimal places you need to carry that out. And then we were also asked to do the cosecant. As you can see, there's no cosecant button on our calculator. But the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Or we can just put 1 over sine of x is equal to the cosecant. So 1 over the sine of 3. So I input that into my calculator. 1 divided by sine. My angle is 3, and this is 3 radians now. 3 radians, oh, that's right around pi. That's right around 180 degrees, just a little shy of it. And we get 7.08616.
So that concludes our objectives for this particular video, and we'll get some practice with this when I see you in class.